section 2.4 is all about the properties of quadratic functions. So friendly reminder, a function f is a quadratic function if it takes on the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers and a doesn't equal zero. Remember, a cannot equal zero because if a equaled zero, we'd have a linear equation and that's not a quadratic. The graph of any quadratic function is a parabola. It looks like this. One way to remember it is quadratic function. There's a u on the q. So the graph of any quadratic function is a parabola with a vertical axis of symmetry right down the center. A parabola um, is also known as a squaring function. Here's our most general squaring function, f of x equals x squared. Its domain is all real numbers, so from negative infinity to positive infinity, and its range in this case goes from zero to infinity. This range is what changes as we use vertical and horizontal shifts to move our graph around the coordinate plane. In this case, our vertex is zero, zero. That's where our graph switches from having negative, from being decreasing to increasing. Its axis of symmetry right here is the vertical line x equals zero, and it's continuous over its entire domain. Well, what does that mean? I haven't really talked about that. So in our pre-calculus case, as we're prepping for calculus, Continuous over our entire domain means I can draw it without picking up my pencil. So here are some properties of the graph of a quadratic function. So its vertex hk is defined by h, which is negative b over 2 minus a, and k, which is also known as f of h, that's our vertex. That's where our graph switches from increasing to decreasing slope or decreasing to increasing, depending upon um, whether it is reflected over the x-axis. Our axis of symmetry is always the vertical line, x equals negative 2b, negative b over 2a, which is our x value of our vertex. And the parabola is concave up if a is greater than zero, meaning if I have a positive a value, my graph opens up. My parabola is concave down if I have a negative a value. So this one's positive and this one's negative. So if I have a parabola and my a is less than zero, so negative, that means my graph is concave down, like I said, and my vertex is the maximum. That's the maximum y value I can take on. If I have a is greater than zero, so a is positive, then my vertex is my minimum. It's the smallest value I can take on. And we're going to use this fact to solve some word problems using quadratics right at the end of this section. Friendly reminder that if I have a function that's a parabola and I add a constant, right? That's going to shift my graph k units along the y-axis. So here is my graph shifted down to I can also have a horizontal shift. Remember, horizontal shift is opposite. So if I have f of x equals x minus 2, that's actually shifted to the right 2. Um, if I have f of x equals x plus 3, squared that's shifted to the left three and you can review this in chapter one if you are still not 100% confident in horizontal and vertical shifts of parabolas. So we're going to find the vertex of a parabola using the vertex formula. So this is the vertex form of a parabola but when we get parabolas, they aren't always written like that. So we can go ahead and solve for our vertex, knowing that our line of symmetry is h. So here I have f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 5. So I know that h is negative b. a is 1, b is negative 4. No need for c here. Negative b over 2a. So that gives me an h value of 2. Then to find k, that's f of h, 
which is f of 2, so I plug 2 in, so I've got 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 5. That gives me 4 minus 8 plus 5, which is 1. So I have a vertex when x is 2 and y is 1. Next, if I have, so let's change color, f of x equals x squared minus x minus 6. In this case, a is 1, b is negative 1. So h equals negative negative 1 over 2. That's going to be 1 half. f of 1 half, that's going to be the y value of my vertex. That gives me 1 half squared minus 1 half minus 6. That's 1 fourth minus 2 fourths minus 24 fourths. So I get a negative 25 fourths. So my vertex is when h is 1, when x is 1 half, y is negative 25 fourths. So you can see this would be my standard x squared function, but my graph is shifted right 1 half and down negative 2 fourths if we were looking at the vertex form. So let's graph the following. We're going to state the domain, range, line of symmetry, and whether or not it has a maximum or minimum. So my a value here is 2, which is positive. So that means I'm going to have a minimum, not a maximum. b is 4. h equals negative b over 2a, which is negative 4 over 2 times 2. So I get negative 1. k is f of h which is f of negative 1. That gives me 2 times negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 plus 5, which is 2 minus 4 plus 5, which is 3. So my vertex is when x is 1 and y is 3. x is negative 1, y is 3. There's my vertex. But in order to graph a parabola, I need to know more than just one point. I need three, and I need them to be precise. So let's look at when x is negative two and when x is zero because we've got symmetry. So if I was to take f of zero, that would be the easiest one. That gives me two times zero plus four times zero plus five, and it's symmetric. So when x is negative two, y is five, x is one, y is five. Da, 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 da. Okay, so my domain is all real numbers because it's a parabola. My range has been shifted up 3, so my range goes from 3, where 3 is included, all the way to infinity. My line of symmetry is x equals negative 1, and my minimum is my vertex, which is this point right here, which is when x is negative 1 and y is 3. So next we're going to graph the following, state the domain, range, line of symmetry, and the maximum or the minimum. I have f of x equals negative 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. That means this parabola is going to open up concave down, so we'll have a maximum. I'm going to take h, which is negative b over 2a. So a is negative 3, b is negative 2. That gives me 2 over negative 6, which is negative 1 third. k is my f of h, so I'm going to take negative 3 times negative 1 third squared minus 2 times negative 1 third plus 1. I'll become with fractions. So I get negative 3 ninths plus 2 thirds plus 1. Well, that's going to be negative one-third plus two-thirds plus three-thirds, which is four-thirds. So my vertex is when x is negative one-third, y is four-thirds, and this vertex is my maximum. Negative one-third, four-thirds. Now, I know this is going to open up concave down. In order to graph a parabola, I need to find at least three points in this parabola, remembering that parabolas are symmetrical, but I don't have any good 
I'm not really going to pick any symmetrical points to negative one third. So let's look at when x is negative one and when x is zero. So when x is zero, I get one. When x is negative one, I get negative three plus two plus one, which is zero. When x is negative one, y is zero. And when x is zero, y is one. So we've graphed our parabola. My domain is all real numbers. My range goes from negative infinity all the way to 4 thirds, and 4 thirds is included. My line of symmetry is right through my vertex at x equals negative 1 third. That's our line of symmetry. We can also find the formula of a function, also known as a parabola, right, of a quadratic function, given its vertex and one other point. So if my vertex hk and one other additional point on the graph of a quadratic function, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, when a doesn't equal 0, we can use the vertex form. So I have f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And we can use that to obtain our quadratic function. So here I have my vertex. So this is my h and my k. And I know my y-intercept is 3, so that's when x is 0, y is negative 3. We're going to rewrite out our function, knowing that this y is f of x and this is x. We can solve for h, and we can rewrite this in uh, vertex form. So I have negative 3 equals a times x minus h squared plus k. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. 2 equals a. Oh, i got to plug in x, right? x is 0. Well, that's negative 1 squared. So 2 equals a. So this is f of x equals 2 times x minus 1 squared minus 5. And if I wanted to get this into the standard quadratic form that we're used to, I'd FOIL this. So I have f of x equals 2 x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 5. f of x equals 2x squared minus 4x plus 2 minus 5. So f of x equals 2x squared minus 4x minus 3. Let's do another example. This time I'm not given my intercept. I'm just given another point. So my vertex is... Um, hk, where I've got my x and my f of x, which is y. So I have negative 8 equals a, which is what we're solving for, times negative 1 minus 1 squared plus 4. Negative 8 equals a times negative 2 squared plus 4. I subtract 4. Negative 12 equals 4a, so negative 3 equals a. I have f of x equals negative 3, x minus 1 squared plus 4, and I go ahead and FOIL out this. So I have f of x equals negative 3, x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus 4. So f of x equals negative 3x squared plus 6x minus 3 plus 4. So I have my function. This parabola is negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 1.